we're just getting our tent up here and uh, we're short some legs. So on this section that we built for our office uh, coffee room, we're just building up uh, a pony wall up to four feet and then uh, the uh, tent leg is gonna land on this. And then the rest of the perimeter around the, uh, uh, on top of the cans uh, are gonna be metal feet that came with uh, the kit for our shed. And we're gonna tack weld those to the, um, to the tops of the cans. I am putting together the spacers between the rafters of the tent. He's pre-doing it and then over there he's putting them up and we stand it up and we've already done five of them. This will be the sixth and last one. And then hopefully we'll be able to use the scissor lift, pull it up and put it on top of the two C cans. It all goes well. So what we're doing is we are scraping off the top of the paint so you can weld. You can't weld if you have uh, paint on there. So just scraping around it so we can attach the post on top of the sea can. We just peeled off this copper plate and uh, we just removed uh, this metal support for um, for the clipper bow and uh, yeah so this was all concealed underneath this copper plate and uh, we got freshwater ingress and uh, seeing lots of dry rot. There it is. <laughs> Check it out. That's all. That's all termite. Star, as she was um, uh, originally built and delivered to the Arctic, she wasn't covered in copper. The bottom was not sheathed in copper. Initially, she just had this green heart on her. This is extremely hard, hard wood. This is put on all these vessels that went that went north because the uh, Douglas fir, that the, you know, the hull planking, it's great, except it's really not very good uh, against abrasion. It's extremely soft, so. They, they would clad the vessel with this. And, you know, I wish you could feel how heavy it is. It's, I mean, it's like, you know, there's no bending it. It's, it's as hard as a rock. It's great stuff. So in order to put the copper on, 
all of this, they took it all off because it didn't have this felt underneath it and it didn't have tar underneath it. When it was built in San Francisco, they just nailed it on. I mean, so it had to be removed <laughs> and then put back on after felt and tar was applied to the, to the planking and they reapplied all the pieces carefully numbered and put back as they were originally, <laughs> just in order to then cover it with copper. <laughs> certainly in there. vessel passed to the second owner, Sven. He kept the vessel in the north for a while, but eventually brought her down to Victoria with the plan that he was going to take her to do a, a guess around the world voyage where she would be in tropical waters for an extended period of time. So he was concerned, very concerned that the vessel would end up being eaten by worms, torito worms. Well, they're interesting creatures. They're actually a, a simple bivalve like a clam except that instead of the, the body being inside the shell, these have evolved so that the shell has become two chewing jaws and then the inside of the clam is, has become a long tail that goes out behind it and it, you know, this is what it uses to digest, to produce the enzymes and digest the wood that it's eating. And so these larvae float around in the water and if they get lucky enough and attach themselves to a piece of wood, they can morph into this digging clam and burrow their way into the wood. Well, here, here you can see, you know, the kind of damage that the Doritos do. This isn't a bad example. This is just, you know, light, light damage, really. And in the stern of North Star, where the copper had been damaged, the wood was almost completely gone. I mean, just, you could pull it out with your hands. So this is, uh, you know, that's the beginning of damage. <laughs> There's two solutions. One, uh, and the most commonly used solution is to simply take the vessel into fresh water and uh, the, fre the, the worms will die or if there, if there happens to be any. So solution and the long-term solution really is, is to clad the bottom in copper. And I mean, there's more than just the copper. There's the tar and the felt. This, this is a barrier. If the worms do get in, then they, this will keep them from, from, you know, from passing through the barrier. You can see how many holes there are. I mean, it's just nailed everywhere along the edge. The poor crew, the job they had to remove these nails from these, these ring nails, and all the time working with tar, uh, most of which has been removed, but you can still still see there's, you know, there's some left on there. And this is one thing covering this. You can cut this with tin snips, but a good part of the vessel was in fact covered with this stuff, which is, I mean, it's copper. It's not exactly copper sheathing. It's, you know, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> that. It's the kind of thing that, I don't know, he's cut it out with a whole saw. And, I mean, many pieces, all this, all the keel around the side of the keel, any place that was really kind of structural. But the, at the end of the day, it did save the vessel. I don't think there's any question about it. The vessel lasted, it floated it all the way up the river, <laughs> all the way to Shelter Island here, 88 years old. You could see that, no, it had been pr completely protected from the outside, it, it was. Nothing could go through there. But the, wa the fresh water ingress from out, from on deck and seeping down through all the planking it rotted and deteriorated from the inside. So it looks like the combination of all these layers really are the reason why North Star survived all these years. Hi. 
the gum wood and the Irish felt. When they built the thing, they sheathed it in gum wood and the whole boat's covered in it from just above the water line uh, all the way down to the garboard and then they've also sheathed the deadwood as well. At some point in its history, I believe somebody's added this extra keel, maybe to try to improve sailing performance. So the gum wood came all the way down to the deadwood and then covered the deadwood as far as this keel timber. It's actually surprisingly good. I, uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously not ideal. You can see here, definitely some compromised material but I kind of expected to be able to just stick my tool in anywhere. Uh, this is nice here, a little bit of uh, cement reinforced with some wire and stuff. Some sort of accident in the past that has been repaired with cement and baling wire. These nails don't seem to be holding that well, which is not a good sign for the planking underneath. Normally a boat that's been sitting in the water, a wooden boat that's been sitting in the water for a couple of decades, the worms, the Toritos would have eating it all out. But you can see a difference sort of like there's the layer of stuff that was under the copper and this is it I believe. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Uh, I think this is more just like regular roofing tar paper that was under the copper. You know it doesn't have nearly the same thickness or fiber content as what's under the gum wood. It's funny it's a bit of like an archaeological dig you know peeling back the layers and trying to guess what the past inhabitants were up to. We'll know in a day or two whether or not we're taking it all off or what. But. Just setting up this tent so we can work on North Star. Tightening this front tarp, which will be the front side of our new shop here. That's not tight enough. knots with gloves on but it's cold. <laughs> so this is going to attach to a line with a loop on one side of the tarp and then we'll be pulling down on this side. position. Super cool. 